And let's continue our coverage of the social media ban for under 16s as debate continues on it. Joining us now, Jordan Ditloff is the Libertarian Party's lead candidate for Senate in Victoria at the 2025 federal election. Jordan, good evening to you. Good evening, Leo. Thanks for having me. Yeah, nice to have you here. So your party uh, has issued a bit of an ultimatum to the Liberals who are supporting this. And we know that if the coalition withdrew support, uh, this would not pass based on the numbers we see. What is that ultimatum? Yeah, that's right, Leo. So with the Greens and the coalition voting against this bill, they would have 41 votes in the Senate. So that would it wouldn't matter what the crossbench think, although there are a number of crossbenchers also against it. Leo, I'm a former member of the Liberal Party and I left the Liberal Party in 2014 in large part because I was disappointed and disillusioned um, with the party. But 10 years is a long time in politics. And I think now this issue and the issue of free speech in particular is a source of real white hot anger in the coalition uh, voter and membership base. And I'm not just speculating about that. Over the past couple of weeks on the campaign trail, I've had unsolicited conversations with many people in the Liberal Party who have shared that frustration. And now we're at the threshold of this bill um, being voted on potentially this week in the Senate. And I thought I would make one last ditch attempt to try to convince the coalition that the juice wouldn't be worth the squeeze if they went through with this. So the ultimatum is that if they don't change their position and vote against this bill by the end of the sitting week, uh, we will be releasing a new free financial membership type for former Liberal Party members who want to express their disappointment and send a message to the Liberal Party that the Liberal Party isn't representing them and their values. Yeah, right. So you're, you're pushing there. And, and obviously, I think it has been interesting in, in, I guess, recent times in that there has been some cooperation, not just in Victoria, with, with the the Liberals and the Libertarians, if I recall correctly, you know, in New South Wales, for instance, the only party that uh, the Liberals preferenced in the upper house were the, the Libertarians. Um, and at some level, that's been a, a mutually um, beneficial here. Um, the other side of this is, of course, you know, um, as, as much as your party has grown, and we've, we've talked about your local election results, um, you're still a small party. Do, do you think they are going to listen to you? Do you think it actually matters whether they lose a, a few dozen um, members to you or, or members consider joining you when, you know, they still would have, um, you know, a bigger membership base? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll answer your first question first, Leah, and that is that um, we are the friends of the Liberal Party when they're at their best. Um, when the Liberal Party is living and acting in accordance with their values, we see no issue supporting them and, and working in cooperation with them. But that is conditional support and conditional um, cooperation. And at the moment on the free speech issue, the Liberals have been good belatedly on the MAD legislation. It was originally their legislation that they proposed, but they thought better of it and listened to the dissenting voices in the coalition and reversed their position. And we're calling on them to do that again now. The only thing standing in the way is Peter Dutton's position personally and his desire not to lose face as the leader. But when it comes to the Liberals' membership base, um, one thing I know, and this was true 10 years ago, and it's certainly even more true now, is that the Liberals' volunteer and member base is ageing. Um, there, are, there are some areas in Victoria where our party probably has a numerical superiority in terms of young, willing volunteers and members to hand out how to vote cards and to um, rock up at pre poll So you might be surprised at just how vulnerable the Liberals are when it comes to uh, that Achilles heel that is their supporter base and membership base. And you might also be underestimating the the strength of the, the sentiment in the membership, but also in the party room. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be bothering doing this if I didn't think that there was at least as many people in the, the joint coalition party room who opposed this legislation as did the MAD legislation. But the information I'm getting is that um, they're very frustrated and disappointed that Peter Dutton's kind of made this captain's call. Right. So th that is a significant point that you've made. We, we've heard some dissenting voices um, uh, 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 publicly, uh, Matt Canavan has has been outspoken on it um, uh, 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 on social media. He was, you know, mentioning six news about this a couple of days ago. Um, and and there were some when we saw uh, today. There were some people who were at least um, expressing maybe concern about the way it's being implemented or maybe the speed. I know, by the way, on Peter Dudden, he has said um, even he wants it faster than the government's doing it now. He wants it by Christmas, whether that would be practical or not, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, but you're saying there that there are potentially even more dissenting voices that, that could actually make a difference. It's not just what some might call the fringe of the party. No, absolutely not. With things like this, the Liberal Party is obviously not as disciplined as Labor when it comes to these kind of issues. You're always going to see a little bit more 
percolating to the surface when there are tensions. But for you to see in a first term opposition with it, with a leader doing as well in the polls as Dutton is, for you to see two upper house backbenchers in Alex Antich and, um, and Matt Canavan expressing their views as stridently as they have been, where the opposition leader is on record of personally, as you say, wanting to outmuscle Labor on e-safety, that's extraordinary. And that doesn't just mean it's the fringe of the party. That means that that's the tip of the iceberg and there's a lot of people not saying what um, Alex Santich and Matt Canavan um, are pushing the envelope to say. So I think that there is not only a lot of division in the Liberal Party membership on this issue and the response to the, the video ultimatum that I put out last night, there's been 100,000 views. I've been getting constant comments from Liberal Party members, some of whom are saying they don't even care whether the ultimatum we've issued is met by the coalition or not. The fact that it's come to this, that a minor party um, sharing similar values that wants to try to hold the Liberals to account and, and uh, get them to um, essentially act in accordance with their principles. The fact that it's even come to that is enough for many of these members. So in, in a way, um, it appears that for some, it may not matter what the coalition does next, but acting against my own interests here and um, really talking in the interests of Australians, um, who would all be better served if this bill was was not passed, um, I'd urge Peter Dutton and the Coalition Party Room tomorrow to reject this legislation and to turn around and reverse course. Something that I guess is is um, being talked about amongst this discussion about the Liberals' party support is, as you've touched on, the party's principles, right, of well, liberalism. I know there's plenty of people within um, your party as well, the libertarians, who describe themselves as kind of classical liberals is, is the term. Um, and, and as you mentioned, of course, you are an ex uh, liberal member. Um, again, again, there are a lot of correlations between this and the, the mis and disinformation legislation, which, as we've discussed, right, the Liberals are against, and that's why it's defeated. Um, but do you think just just kind of on on principle, it just shouldn't be supported, on the principle of, of being a Liberal? Look, Leo, it's difficult to see. It's sort of a um, I think what Tony Abbott once called it's a triple back, backflip somersault when it comes to policy and principles. Uh, and it's it's really difficult to see the cognitive dissonance in the leadership team here in the Liberal Party on this issue is is like nothing I've ever seen. Like I, Today, the Queensland LNP X account posted that they were glad to see this, this bill, the misinformation, disinformation bill in the bin, and it's a victory for free speech and democracy. And they've just been fiercely ratioed in the comments and People are saying, well, hang on a second, how is this different? Why do you support this and not this? And it's an impossible question to answer. And unfortunately, I think Peter Dutton views this issue as the, the federal equivalent of law and order. As, as you know, law and order and police enforcement is a state issue. And it's an issue that Liberals usually do quite well on. And I suspect that Peter Dutton sees the digital e-safety realm as the sort of uh, digital version of that law and order where he can be more muscular and try to kind of flex the, the coalition's credentials on keeping digital spaces safe for the community. That, that's what I believe this is really being driven by. And I think that's misguided. And if Peter Dutton wants to make the Albanese government a first term government from opposition, which would be an incredible and very difficult feat, uh, he needs all the friends he can get. And I don't think he's going to be winning any votes from anyone um, under 35 with these, with these policies. I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, it wouldn't just be your individual call and we're still months away, but is support for something like this something that could potentially impact how you guys ultimately preference maybe in the, the Senate, noting, of course, preferences are ultimately down to the voter? Look, as I say, those decisions will ultimately be made based on what the Liberal Party does, not what they say uh, six months out from an election. Um, six months is a very long time in politics. And we look forward to, in the future, working with the Liberal Party when we have shared issues and when our values and actions align. And um, I see no reason why there couldn't be the same sort of cooperation we've seen on the preference front. And uh, this issue doesn't have to be conflated with that, but it could easily um, have an impact if the Liberal Party doesn't really um, begin to, I suppose, live up to its values. 
And just just quickly, more broadly, on on the actual discussion about this ban itself, we had uh, uh, an uh, public submissions open uh, late last week for only twenty four hours. Of, noting, of course, um, the sitting days in, in Parliament are really just about to end. Um, only twenty four hours there. They've they've come up public today. You can find six news's name on there. Quickly rush that one yes, through. Um, and well. uh, and then then also um, you had this. Uh, in, uh, um, uh, inquiry today where there was I think it was about three hours it went for um, we had, had some consultation there um, w- what do you make of kind of the whole process and again I'll just circle back to what I mentioned at the start right that the, the uh, opposition is wanting this even faster they're wanting this well it's it's November 25th today they want this in 30 days yeah look I think that um, the Senate is meant to be the House of Review it's meant to be the the check on the the check on the government of the day and the state's house as well, advocating for the state's interests. I think that a process like this where you're seeing legislation, not only this bill, the, the age restrictions for social media, but also potentially electoral reforms, um, really critical electoral reforms relating to donation caps and expenditure caps being rammed through the Senate. Um, I think that the Albanese government is desperately looking for a win when it comes to their legislative agenda. They've got a logjam of over 20 pieces of legislation that you can see the Coalition and the Greens have sort of uh, worked together to stymie. And so I think the the Labor Party in particular is keen to push this through, but that just makes it all the more important that the Liberal Party oppose and act as an alternative government and really um, subject these bills to a bit of scrutiny because the very limited scrutiny, as you note, with this has already thrown up a number of very concerning elements. And I'm certain that that's just scratching the surface. This, This bill, to me... Um, as a, a legally trained person, a law graduate, reads like it's being drawn up on the back of an envelope and indeed in questioning Matt Canavan um, drew it out of the department that drafting on this only commenced two weeks ago. And it looks like that. Many of the decisions that are uh, in the bill are going to be made down the track by unelected officials and they are making policy on the fly and relying on regulatory rules to decide c- critical things like what's in and what's out, which could also change on the on the, on the 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 head of a pin. You know, one day YouTube could be in, the next it could be out. And I expect that if this bill does pass, which I hope fervently hope it doesn't, but if it does, I think that we'll see Peter Dutton try to, again, continue to outmuscle the Labor Party on these regulations and what will actually be included and what won't. Just, just very, very finally, because I, I saw this today and it was just extraordinary. Um, this from uh, Josh Taylor from the Guardian. He was, he was looking at this inquiry and, and on the question about VPN usage, um, he, he said, and I quote: "The department is suggesting that if someone uses a VPN to sign up to a social media platform, then those platforms would be expected to check their posts on social media to see if they're actually based where the VPN says they are." I mean, what do you make of that? Look, it's it's breathtaking in both its hubris and its uh, doomed to fa- doomed to failure. Um, and I said um, some months ago, with respect to the MAD legislation and this legislation, that the next frontier for e-safety with the e-safety commission and likely Peter Dutton, if he's elected, have their eyes on is it will be a war on VPNs. It'll be a war on the ability to maintain anonymity online even at the same time as the government is passing ever harsher doxing legislation. It's It's it doesn't make any sense. It's um, bizarre and difficult to understand. And I think that the Libertarian Party is really the only party that speaks consistent sense on this topic. Look, I'm sure we'll be catching up a lot more as that 2025 federal election comes up. Jordan Ditloff, Senate candidate in Victoria for the Libertarian Party. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me, Leah.